Hello, hello, everybody. This is Carrie Hamblin, the CEO and president of the Las Cruces Green Chamber of Commerce and getting to resume Zoom chats here on the Las Cruces Green Chamber Facebook page and in our social media. And what we do with these Zoom chats is we welcome our member businesses here to use our social media to help share with everybody what they're doing in the community. And today I am so excited because I have Laura and Kevin Self from Michelle's Dance Academy. They just finished a dance class earlier today. And so they are here and we are talking about some amazing projects that they've got coming up that they're brewing Maybe we'll talk about it just a little bit. But Laura and Kevin, it is so good to see your faces. How are you oh, doing? Thank you. Thanks you for having great. us. We're glad to be here. Thank you. Oh, it's so good to see you. Now, your your we you know your green drinks was actually kind of one of our. It was it was well we had it during the summer and we did dance classes and those were so fun that we well, were we doing put you to there. work. <laughs> we did. We were actually we were actually working. Um, you know, and that was that was one of our larger um, uh, green drinks at your studio. Um, so tell folks a little bit about what Michelle's Dance Academy is and what classes you offer. Well, we've been around for 42 years. We survived COVID. Yes, these wrinkles are well earned. <laughs> but we, we, we offer all kinds of dance over here. We're, we were principally a ballet comp uh, teaching studio, but we've expanded to flamenco and folklorico. And we even teach palm here. We've supplied the, the sun dancers with many a dancer. <laughs> Tap dance. Uh, Musical theater. Contemporary. contemporary. We have a wonderful selection of teachers over here. We really do. It's a giant family. That, yeah. well, we, they're that, still with the <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, when you're so used to seeing your family and you've got a lot of young people who are really excited, and not just young people, but uh, but older folks as well. I mean, you've got the, the gamut of students in terms of ages. Exactly. exactly. But the cute ones are always the little ones when they're well, wearing it's just not fair. Yeah, it's just not are, fair. So we were so hard and they just get up there and smile and it's done. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. It's like, oh, you don't even need to dance. Just, just, <laughs> just wiggle a little bit because you're so cute. So, um, you know, we've talked about before we started recording this, but um, during COVID that that you were one of the ones that that did really still did remarkably well um you know in comparison to some of the challenges but you really tackled it head on you know so tell me you know some of the things that you did um you know in the beginning of the pandemic and now as we're starting to see things kind of change how you're seeing that you're having to change well we after we got over the initial is it over in two weeks? Is it over in three weeks? <laughs> we had about 50 plans in place, depending, you know, throughout the summer of when it first started and through the fall about, we went through 20 schedules, which really tried to hone in. We didn't know if anyone would come back, but we we tackled it. We kept it a safe environment. Everyone dances six, more than six feet apart. We wear masks, we sanitize, we question everyone at the door, but we knew it was so important for these kids to get back in here because they were at home going crazy. They, uh, the parents were going crazy and they needed their outlet. They needed something that was still normal in their lives. So we started small. I mean, we did start small back where we only had some of the students come back, but we even managed to do a nutcracker in January. Um, we kept it socially distanced. They wore masks. We wrote the storyline of COVID into the nutcracker script. We made it work. And it kept the kids doing something that they love to do. It wasn't the same. And we tackled that. We said, it's not going to be the same, mm -hmm. but at least you still get to dance and you still get to have your outlet, your creativity flow. And it worked great. So we have been operating live on and off since last summer, no incidents of COVID, not one in the studio. Mm -hmm. Good for you. And now we're starting to be able to, more people are coming in and we're so thankful. And we were very fortunate. Laura has a degree in computer science. We went high tech right away. No problem. I did the firmware. She did the software. Straight by Zoom. No glitches, just straight into Zoom. One of our studios is large enough to do productions. It has theater lighting, theater sound, the whole works. So we were set for that. And we just turned the camera around and started making everything happen inwardly and then provided it outward. And it's worked very well. Not to say that it didn't have glitches, but yeah. it's fine. Right. Yeah, we Mike just adapted. We went straight to Zoom for classes at first. We did the production of Nutcracker by Zoom where people could watch. And it turned out we restaged everything so it worked on Zoom cameras so they could still see everybody and taught us a lot. We had to train the, the, the 
the dancers to have a whole different focus mm -hmm. in, in a video mm -hmm. rather than having a full broad proscenium stage. So right, because it's a different creature when you're when you're dancing for camera than when you're dancing for a live audience. You know why somebody could be seen behind the camera? It was it was all a different angle all <laughs> But we're going to do a recital in May still. We're going to do it in our studio again, since now we're trained for that. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we're, we're excited that things are coming back. I think a lot of these kids um, had such a problem being so inward. You know, they we had brought oh. them out then COVID brought them back into their shells. And so the ones that have come back it have was done dramatic. so well it was because they've been able, we we still make them talk mm -hmm. in, in, in a safe environment, even if it, I'd rather spend the half part of the class talking about their feelings and letting them feel heard than dancing because they need yeah. to still see that they can express themselves. But before I forget, I really want to thank the parents that trusted us with their children. That was a huge leap and we had quite a few. And it was well, you know, and it's so impressive how, um, you know, and that's one of the reasons for these Zoom chats is really just to demonstrate how businesses have become so resilient and creative. I mean, you've kind of been forced to, but, you know, I think when we're on the other side of this, it will be like, oh, these are the things that I know I can do differently now that still work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, I think for live performances, there will always be the need for live performances. There's just something magical oh, wow. about being there. And, and I, I don't, I don't think that it will be something that will ever go away, but I'm wondering, you know, given now that you've got this idea of how this technology works into it, do you think that you might like do a combination of those things now? Because you're providing Absolutely. access, you're providing accessibility for people who won't, who wouldn't normally be able to be there. I think we'd be foolish to go backwards. I really do. People logged in for this Nutcracker, this virtual Nutcracker from all across the country. So grandparents who hadn't seen their grandchildren got to watch them perform. Uh, you know, and so we had a whole different audience. Mm -hmm. We had ex-dancers who signed up for Zoom tickets just because they thought, I can't be there, but I just want to be able to see it. So it has opened a new world. And I mm -hmm. think we'll always still have a virtual component of it for the Poor parents that, you know, grandparents that can't travel. It's so nice for them to be able to see something in a live way, even right. if it is We'd be right. foolish if we didn't learn from this. Absolutely. Well, you know, and I think that's that's the lesson that all of us need to learn is that there are new ways to do things that um, the pandemic taught us that we can do. And then there are some things that are, you know, we've got essential workers who we need to have out there and we, we um, and we need to support and and not be jerks to when we go out to the store and we can't find what we need. Um, and so, you know, to appreciate those, those, uh, those, those folks. And so with this, given as we're starting to kind of look at, you know, people getting vaccinated, um, you know, the, the infection rates are not down where they need to be, but we're, we're getting there and there's, there's some light at the end of the tunnel. It's a little far away, but it's still there. How do you see this impacting what you do as a business? And, and if we can kind of plug what you're, you're trying to do, I don't know if that's too early or if you want to wait, but we'll certainly talk about it. We have another opportunity to talk yeah. about it when it's a for sure thing. So just to, to give you that out. Shall I give them a tease? Yes, let's give them a tease. We have plans on the board of bringing possibly a truly professional dance company, contemporary dance company into Las Cruces. They're thinking about settling and coming in from a big city to the little city so that they can grow. And they have been kind enough to choose our studio as their home base. So just, just stick around. So, yes. And so if you are watching this and you are a lover of dance, you are a business owner that appreciates the value that dance provides for our community and for our folks and want to get involved, you'll be able to contact Kevin and Laura. The contact information will be here. We'll still be here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it is an exciting opportunity. And just for you, before we even started recording, we were talking and brainstorming about this project. So it is very, very exciting. And um, you know we have a number of opportunities to continue doing little Zoom chats so that we can promote it once it becomes a for sure thing. Kevin and Laura. So, um, yes. And so, you know, we're going to, we're going to include the, the contact information for you. Um, but beside this big project, and I know that you've probably got a number of plates spinning. Um, what are some other things locally that folks can do to help support you as a, as a local business right now? You know, I think not just for dance, but they need to get their children reinvolved. And I think that's going to be a huge task because we got comfortable where we were before. It doesn't take long to do so. Got to shovel them out, 
Got to get your kids back into a routine. I think a routine is our biggest problem right now. We have none. And dance is the best place to find discipline. You get artistic discipline. Those are two tools that you, you can't do without, right? And they apply so many different areas. So just push them out, take that fashion risk and go for it. And since you are also practicing and um, taking some very strong safety precautions, we know that uh, you are doing a fantastic job of making sure that your students are safe and that your teachers are safe and that people can continue to come back. And so if you've got a small child or a medium child or an adult child who likes to shake their booty and wants to <laughs> learn a little bit more style and a little bit more technique and a little bit more theory, then uh, Michelle's Dance Academy is where you need to go. Is that a good testimonial for you? That's great. great. Thank you. You guys have been so supportive. I'm, I, I'm all for the chamber. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, you know, it's so lovely to talk with you and just to hear about what you're doing. Uh, for those of you that are watching, if you want to support a local business, um, Michelle's Dance Academy, if you know somebody who likes to dance, uh, this is great. The fact that you're doing all sorts of different types of dancing, just from, from little ones to, to bigger ones, that that means includes adults uh, of all ages. Um, you can find all the contact information down below uh, in the text or up above all, depending on how you're looking at this video. Um, but Kevin and Laura, it is so lovely to see you. Um, we will be talking again soon. And once we have the big news to share, we'll do another one of these Zoom chats and kind of do a, an official launching oh, um, with all the fanfare. Um, <laughs> you can even do like little, little, little blow horns and stuff like that. But thank you so much. And as always, uh, on behalf of the Las Cruces Green Chamber of Commerce, we appreciate that you are thinking local first and supporting our local businesses, especially during this time. And, uh, and always encourage you to support our local businesses as they support our local charities as well. So thank you again, Kevin and Laura. It's great seeing you. And uh, we will be back again with another Zoom chat sometime soon. Thanks, everybody. Can't wait. Thank you again.